Hello. I think I'm recording. Yeah, I think I'm recording. Right, I'm just coming out of Radcliffe. Come out of the tea bag factory. Tea bag factory. It's a pulping mill. Just delivered a load of abaca. <clears throat> right. It's a bit bumpy down here. Uh, it's Wednesday, 12:53. And uh, yeah, I've got to go to Lim and get some diesel. Well, I haven't actually. I'm going to get down the bottom of this road and I'm going to stop. He's going to go in there. Taking a lot of bushes out with me here. Yeah? Really want to scratch my nice new truck up. Well, I got out of there just before we went in there. It's a bit tight down in there. Now it's an old mill. And I do mean an old mill, like Victorian era mill. I don't know what it was before it turned in, turned from a tea bag mill to what it is today, or what it was before then, I should say. There's a right load of shit man here. <clears throat> and someone's fly tipped a load of bushes. Handy. Fly tipping will be prosecuted. Well, they took a lot of notice of that fucking sign, didn't they? You know, take the piss. <clears throat> well, I've probably got enough diesel to get me back down to Southampton now. One o'clock. So I'm just going to pull over here and work out my options. It's a bit bumpy. Christ. Right, let's just pull over here. Right. Now I've stopped, I'm all safe. I'll turn you off. Hello. I've just put you back on again. Right. Where did he go? Well, I will be once his car's parked. So I've got until... Uh, I started at quarter to three this morning, so I've got until quarter to four to get parked up. It's one o'clock. You will arrive at your destination at 18.03. Well, well, that's all the way down to uh, Southampton Docks. They look happy chaps in their work there, didn't they? Back in this road. Got worse. Don't remember it being this bad. So I'm just going to leave this running now. I'm 
we'll see how far we get down the road with it. Uh, I think I'm going to be stopping it. Frankly, services tonight. I think. Oh, it's fucking heavy on the way up. Uh, on the way up, though, she was um, 40, 40 plus ton. And um, yeah, I was at uh, Gateway last night. Is he waiting for me? I think he might be. I don't know, maybe not. Oh, okay. I think he was, I think he fell back off it. 600 feet, cross the roundabout and take the first exit, Science Street, then bear right, A665, Pilkington oh. Way. Roundabout and take the first exit, then bear right. See, this is a problem. Oh, jeez. He's let me out. Thank you. So homeless dude, he's right. always here. Six hundred and sixty-five Pilkington Way. Always here. So this is Radcliffe. It's bloody raining. Well, it's not snowing. Somebody said it might snow. Happy birthday, Jackie, April the 3rd. No idea when this comes out. <laughs> Your old man said, give her a mention now. Oh, you've had a mention every video. <laughs> oh dear. Better too many than not enough, eh? What's going on? Ooh, bumps. Don't 
Did I just see that right? They had their hood up and their headphones over the hood. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Plus the fact that your headphones are getting wet. Now I'm pretty certain they're probably not waterproof. Feet, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, B6473, Radcliffe New Road. See, Google Maps wants you to turn right. Seven and a half ton weight limit. And that's why you need a truck sat now. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. Past the goat's gate. I was watching some YouTuber the other day and all he did was use his phone. And thought that that was adequate. I, I, no, no. You know, you're going to get caught out. Either by going down a weight limit or a narrow After bridge feet, or a low high bridge. Very new road. But you're going to come a cropper. Simple as. So this is Whitefield. Turn right. That's my sort of gym there, it's above an Indian. So you're going to have a bit of a workout, 15 minutes in the gym and then chicken gel phase and mushroom rice please. Sorted. Three pints of Cobra. Justify the workout then, can't you? Or should it be the other way round, whereas you do a workout and then justify the Indian? No, no, no. A nice building up here on the left. I guess it was once a bank. It's got like a dome on the top. Don't know what it is now. I reckon it used to be a bank. Now it's a restaurant, maybe I don't know. Manchester Eight or Eight Manchester. Hamilton's all looks a bit posh round here, doesn't it? Is this the posh end of town? I don't know what lane I'm supposed to be in, so I'm taking uh, both of them up. Uh, could sort of be over to me left ish. Well, maybe not as a bloody parked car. Well, I'll just take both of them up again. Yeah, more right than left. See the Red King, that used to be the, that, see? That used to be a pub, gone. The Grove Inn. Oh, that's still going, look. That's still a proper pub. Oh. You really gonna fit in there? Yeah, well, yeah, fair play to you. You got in there. I reckon that used to be a pub as well, look, Clive Anthony sells and lettings, that, that looked like it could have been a pub, maybe. Where am I going here, straight on. I'm just going to stay in this right hand lane, here's the beehive. Oh, oh, do I need to be in that, I don't know. Oh, I don't 
<clears throat> getting one step ahead of myself here. So the bottom of the road, I've got to turn right, so I may as well be in this lane, didn't I? Unless both lanes go round to the right, of course, in which case I'll be hung, hung myself out of dry. Clever. After a quarter of a mile, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, M60, towards Bolton. Bolton? Sounded very posh. Should say third exit, didn't I? Yeah. Who's Bolton? I'm in the right lane. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. Although discretion is the better part of valour here, it's a bit, a bit on the narrow side. I remember this from last time I was round here. Give me some space, give me some space. Give me some space. We're good, we're good, we're good. Take the exit, M60, then take them in the way. Do that. Oh, I'm going to kill a high vis vest. Oh, killed it. Better traffic. Follow M60 towards Ring Road West and South for 5.5 miles. Yay! Good man, good man, good man. Crazy Dutch. Well, it's not Dutch, she is. I don't know, what did she just say then? Five and a half miles. Right, head south. 237 miles to go. Won't be doing that. At half two, we'll uh, give it an hour or so. start thinking about where we're going to stop. See how far we get in an hour. It's only six degrees today. Even double figures, I'm still in my shorts. Bit of traffic up ahead. Oh, it's busy, look. I don't want that, I don't think. Oh, you know, what are you doing? Yeah, she worked hard this morning going up the hills. 
So I had heavy clay all the way up to uh, London Gateway yesterday, all the way from Devon up to, up to Essex, and then um, Essex up to Manchester with another heavy load. <coughs> Sort of done me fuel consumption in. Gotta buy some milk. Remind me, gotta buy some milk. I think I've got lamb kebabs tonight. I've got lamb kebabs or chicken gel frazy, sagaloo, and some onion barges. It's more than our limit. I reckon I should get the Frankie services. As long as there's no hold ups. No fuck wittery. We should be all right. Here we go. Fuck Wittery. Forty mile an hour limit. Rear thrusters engaged. I'm the only one sinking to the speed limit. One says one way, one said the other. Uh, I think I want the other one. Ring Road South. Find out in a minute. Road west and south, or we could do the M62 to Liverpool. See, it's who knows. Keep right. What's the speed limit now? I've lost all the signs. No idea. Okay, we're keeping right. We're doing what she says. 
Google Maps, they go the other way. Back on it. Follow M60 towards Manchester for 7.5 miles. I think this was the way I came in this morning. So if I can get to Frankly, I'll be happy. All that means in the morning is I've got three hours down to the dogs. And then, um... What's going on here? Yeah, we can move over. Three hours down to the dogs, but, um... It gives me more options. I can either cut across M42, M40, that's the way I come in this morning, M42, M40, A34 down, or M4, sorry, M5, A417419, M4, A34. Six and a half a dozen. But it just gives me the options there. If I go any further down, I'm committed one way or the other. There's a whole load of dinosaurs in there. Don't know whether you saw them or not. Dino Falls, it's called. American Golf, they got one of those down by us in Bournemouth. With loads of dinosaurs, we have had loads of dinosaurs in it. Look at that traffic going that way. Don't want to be getting stuck in any of that malarkey. So if I was getting get frankly for around quarter past three, I reckon. Well, I've got to be parked up by quarter four. So uh, and now I can take her 11 off. Quarter past three, that means I can get on the road at quarter past two, half past two, half past three, half past four, half past five. Seven o'clock VBS. Away we go again. Days at the mile, Thursday. Ugh. Well, the battery's holding out well. <laughs> this video could get us all the way down to Frankie Services.
Well, we haven't done a long video for a while. They've all been fairly short, haven't we? So, um, like I say, now, I, I, you know, once you're on, you're on. I can't turn it off. I'm not allowed to touch it. <coughs> not allowed to touch it. <coughs> so I'm not. I turned it on before I started, and um, I'll either be turned off if I stop, or the battery had chug out. I actually came up with a message yesterday saying battery exhausted. It was exhausted, poor thing. And shut itself off. So it'll probably do it might do the same again today, I don't know. But we're still on full bars at the moment. I just say it'd be inter interesting to see how long it lasts for. I probably, oh my god, I probably bore you to death though. Only the diehards will be there till the end. I can probably name you, I won't. <coughs> oh, she's trying to rearrange, you know when you can't get yourself rearranged? It's a bloke thing, isn't it? I'll have to ask the gorgeous kid whether she has to rearrange herself, I don't know. Do women have to do that? I don't think they do, do they? It's all like, you know... It's like... It's there, isn't it? Mind you, I did know a girl once. And I reckon she must have had to have rearranged herself. I reckon you could get them caught up in all sorts. But that's too much. So I'll stop them. It's a family show. <laughs> family show, is it fun? There's a tram. After 1.2 miles, take the exit 5 to 5103 towards Chester. Okay, we'll do that. Both sat navs are in agreement. Lane behind me. Let's see if he does. He does. That Take epic fuck query. He could have just got past me there. Bit of a bend here, just easing off just a fraction. After three quarters of a mile, keep right. Concrete road. Take that, take that fully freighted too fast. Oh, 
on, come on, come on. Keep right. Follow a 5,103 towards Chester for 6.5 miles. Okay, we'll do that. <clears throat> what a gorgeous Kira said she wasn't feeling too well this morning. She's under a bit of pressure at work. So I think it's taking its toll a bit. In a couple of weeks' time, we go on holiday. Well, we go on holiday. It's holiday. We're having a week off, and um, over the Easter period, and we're off to Holland. Well, that'd be good. So Kira's, uh, Kira's dad lives in Holland, so we're going over to see him. They live in the north. It's a place called Bergen, B-E-R-G-E-N. Uh, not to be confused with Bergen in, I think it's Norway. Sweden. Um, it's a little village, lovely little village, beautiful little village. Well, I wouldn't say little. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a town. I guess it's a town. They call it a village, but I think it's a town. Not sure. Um, it's just, it's just really nice, you know. Nice restaurants, nice pubs. Just very nice. Um, 10, 15 minutes from the sea. I'm staying in a nice hotel. Um, yeah, take the kids with us. And it's the first time we've taken EML abroad. Uh, so I'll be interested to see how she copes with the, with the motorways. Um, where am I going here? Right hand lane. Where are you? Right hand lane. It's a 50 mile an hour, not fucking 40. But no, you slow down to 42 mile an hour, my son. So yeah, going over to Holland, we're taking the uh, taking the train. We go uh, Euro Tunnel. We tend to nearly always do that. It's just quicker and easier. It's about a four or five hour drive the other side, so you don't really want three hour journey this end, three, four hour journey down, down to Dover, then a four hour journey on a ferry, and then another four or five hours the other side. It's like, it makes it a long day. Whereas, you know, we can get down to Dover, get on a train, half hour later, 40 minutes later, we're chugging up the road. Quick stop for a bite of wheat, when we get the other side, and uh, away we go again. So yeah, looking forward to that. Nice bit of a, a week's downtime, that'd be good. And a gorgeous Kira needs a time off and she needs to see her dad, so. Uh... Now before the pandemic, before I started doing all this YouTube and sort of malarkey, we used to go across a couple of times a year. We've only been one, well, I haven't been, I haven't been across, Kira went across, she, she got the train. She got the train straight to Amsterdam, changed in Amsterdam, got a train up to Alkmaar and they've got collected from Alkmaar. I 
Out bar's nice. The whole of Holland's nice. I, I do. I do like it. But people are just. Uh, more relaxed not as pretentious as we are in this you know there's none of this got to keep up with the Joneses sort of thing you know planting trees which in about 10 years time will be cut down because they're too close to the edge of the motorway they got too big yeah the fucking sense in that see it all the time They're cutting down trees to plant more trees. Yeah, because that makes perfect sense. Oh, he's close. Just had a sudden overwhelming urge to have fish and chips in. All wrapped up, greasy. Nice bit of haddock, big chunky chips, loads of salt and vinegar. Oh, I could murder that now. So we're coming off here. I don't even know what road this is. M56. Half a mile, take the exit 7, A556, towards Birmingham. M6 South. Take the exit 7. Badger back there. Yeah, this is the road. There's a 
pub on the right hand side, there it is down there, look. I don't know if you'll see it, you'll see the roof maybe, there's a pub down there, but there's no road to it anymore. You can't, you just can't, you can't get to it. Yeah, it's all derelict, I don't know why they just don't pull it down. No good, the man, no beast. And I bet they never thought they'd have a busy old road next to them either. Because this, uh, this road here is new, it used to only be like a normal A road I think. I don't think there was anything as bad as this, or as busy as this, wide as this. I've got plenty of fuel to get me down. I didn't think I'd fill up, but I'll fill up on the docks tomorrow. Uh, I had a quick 20 minute snooze on the way up this morning. Knackered. Woke up a few times last night. Do you, do, you, do you get that when you wake up and the, you think, oh, the alarm's gone off? And you look at your watch and you go, no, nah, it hasn't. And then look at your uh, alarm's gone. No, it hasn't again. I did that about three or four times last night. Then you get, oh, while I'm, while I'm awake, I might as well go for a pee. <clears throat> Man Freight, they got some nice kit. They look after their boys as well, from what I've heard. The VSA is not after me today. After 1.2 miles, take the exit, 19, M6, towards Birmingham. No, uh, he's just staying out in the outside lane, look. Yeah, rules don't apply to him. Thank you, there's the only base. May as well, there's the, I'll, I'll take all that back. You've got to get into the right lane down here. I'll take it back. Birmingham. Birmingham? Or the Preston, where my daughter lives. After half a mile, Take the exit, 19, M6, towards Birmingham, then take the motorway. M6, south only. Take the exit, 19, then take the motorway. break there myself. So this is new here. 
finished it off now. DVSA gone round the corner. M6 southbound. Move over, I'm going to stay in this lane. Scan your boy with the old tassels on the window there. He's got his frilly knickers on. And his R480. Bit of shitty old Montgomery trailer. Irish boy. So we're doing all right back we boys. <laughs> Trying to think what I've done this week, and I can't even remember. I've been to where did I go Monday? Oh, I went to Little House, right? Monday, left the yard, went to Little Hampton. Little Hampton up the London Gateway, which is in Essex near Tilbury Docks, just a bit further on. And then from there, I went all the way down to uh, Newton, just outside of Newton Abbott. Loaded out of Newton Abbott all the way back to London Gateway again and then London Gateway all the way to Manchester now Manchester back down to Southampton Involved a fair bit of driving, which, uh, which I don't mind. To be honest, I don't mind what I do, you know. It's got a fair overhang there, it's overhanging onto the trailer. Somebody, uh, uh, Catman Clancy, asked um, about my illustrious military career. <laughs> All I did was drink Germany dry. Um, yeah. It's seven years. Did a few exciting things. So the Royal Signals, for those that don't know the Royal Signals, it's communications, providing communications for all sorts of different reasons really. Um, I joined in 1983 feels like a lifetime ago now. 1983. 
what were you doing in 1983? Tell me, what were you doing? Where were you and what were you doing? So, yeah, joined in 1983 as a, what they called a boy soldier. Um, so he had to be under 17 and a half, or 17, I think. 17 and a half, I think you had to be under. Well, it might have even been 18. Yeah, I think it might have been 18. He had to be under the age of 18. Um, I was actually one of the youngest there. There was one other guy there called, uh, well, I won't mention his last name, a guy called Dave. But I'm still in touch with him today. Lovely bloke. And uh, he, I think he was a couple of days younger than I am. And there's another guy, another guy. But I'm one other rich. He was, uh, he was, um, he was, he was, he, I think he was a couple of days younger. But I, I, I joined on July, I think it was July the, July the 4th or July the 6th. I can't remember. I'll be put right by one of my mates, I'm sure. Um, it was either July the 4th or July the 6th. And my birth, my 16th birthday was on July the 18th. So I joined technically when I was 15. Had my 16th birthday in. And uh, to start off with, we did nine months of basic infantry training as a boy soldier. And it was hard. It was hard graft, you know. It was it was hard graft, but you 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 learn how to soldier, you know. And uh, and it gave you a good grounding. Um, and a good skill set. We, you know, did a fair bit of marching up and down, like you do. Shouted out quite a bit. Shouted out a lot, actually. <laughs> Beasted, run ragged, knackered. Cold, wet, tired, most of the time. Yeah, it was good. Um, you know, we did... Uh, and this is the difference between, you know, when you join up as an adult soldier, you only do 11 weeks of basic training. I did nine, we did nine months. But all they get to do is fight, they, they learn how to use their own personal weapon, which depending on what trade you are, um, use your own personal weapon, you were on the ranges for a couple of days, and that was it. We had weeks on the range, we had, you know, must have been, spread out over the nine months a good maybe three or four weeks of, of of range time and we fired all sorts of different weapons from uh self-loading rifles with the old slr smgs submachine guns um nine millimeter browning pistols on the um close quarter combat uh ranges uh through grenade, learn how to use a grenade, use how to learn, use a, um, a 88 millimeter rocket launcher. Um, but did all of that, you know, it was really, really good. Live firing exercises, fuck, you know, you know, we did um, setting uh, phosphorus trips and all sorts, yeah, we did, we did all sorts, it was really good. Really, really good, I enjoyed it. But, you know, we also did a whole load of, um, uh, um, adventure training, you know, like rock climbing and, um, well, I actually did a parachute course whilst I was there. Jumped at 2,000 feet. Um, static, 2,000 foot static line jump, so we did, I did that, that was good. Um, what else do we do? Rock climbing, windsurfing, I went skiing. I had about four or five days down in the Hearts Mountains, flew out to the Hearts Mountains. Yeah, went skiing. Uh, what else? Oh, we had a right old time. Loads of hiking and, you know, you know loads of loads of different stuff. Yeah, was, you know, I look back on it, at, at the time, it was hard graft, you know, it really was hard graft. And, um, I wasn't the fist. Put my hands up to that. But uh, yeah, I kept going and uh, we, we did it. So I passed out in April, but because my birthday went until July, the, I joined in July, and we passed out after nine months was April. And then from April to July, when my 18th, uh, my um, so I was 17 and a half, I couldn't go to Catrick, which is where they did the trade training. No, when I was 17, sorry. I couldn't go to I couldn't get get to Catrick till I was 17 and a half. No, 17, sorry. 
So um, I had about uh, from April till July, where we just did sport all day because we passed off and we were in, in like, like a holding trip. There was only a few of us. There was a few to start off with. Then it whittled down as, the, as people became 17. They could go to Catherine for their trade training. And uh, and we just played tennis and uh, went running and badminton and table tennis and helped out with the, you know, help the uh, direction stuff or the DS out with, um, you know, with the sports that were coming in. And uh, yeah, we, had, we were fully badged by then. It was, it was a good time, good, good couple of months. We had a right laugh. Then got a cat trick and then I did, uh, got there in July and six months of trade training where I learned my trade. And then from there, so that was that was uh, from the July until uh, to the December, and then January, yeah, finished just before Christmas. So I had Christmas and New Year off on leave, and then first week of January I was posted out of Germany. Seventeen and a half. I was posted posted my first work in Europe. I've done a year and a half already and I was only a year and a half in the army and I was only 17 and a half. But the trouble is it, it sort of you grow up fast. So you know I'd, I'd go home on leave and um, you know, but Ben, I was living up, living away from home. I had my own money. And I was just, you know, we were going out on the lash on the weekends and doing all these sort of different things. And I was getting home, going to see my mates, and uh, oh no, I can't come out. Why is that? Because my mum said I couldn't. What? 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 <laughs> it's like fucking hell. So I saw it. It was a different world. I went home and I was a completely different person to the person that left a year and a half before. And um, I felt slightly, uh, not alienated, but I'd, I'd, you just know you're different, you know? And, uh, yeah, it was, di it was different. It was different. Certainly, you, like I say, you go out fast, you experience things, you see things, you do things. And you can't, you can't equate that to being back to your mate that's still at college, you know, with no money. And you know, I, was, I was earning, you know, I was earning, I wouldn't say it was good money, but it was, well, yeah, it was pretty good money. Always have money in my pocket. So yeah, that's the first part. I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about it when I go to Germany. I've got, I've got loads of stories there, but it was um, it was a good grounding. I think it did me good. It really did do me good. And I'm not one for national. So don't get me wrong. I don't think everybody should do it. I don't think national service is the way forward. I've got to be honest. I, I know it would sort out a, a lot of a lot of a lot of people, but. Push comes to the shove, and you're in a situation where you've got someone next year that your life depended on them, and they're, they're national service. They don't really want to be there. They're at, they're there because they have to be, not because they want to be. And the blo bloke to your left is like that, and the bloke to your right is there because he wants to be there. He signed up on a dotted line for Green and Country. I, I'd know where my um, my loyalty, loyalty would lie. Can hit the brakes for just hit the brakes it's a shadow fucking thing um do you know what i mean so you get you get the national serviceman which is effectively like it's conscription isn't it they ain't fucking interested they're not going to put themselves out they're not going to protect you or look after you save your life so no i'm not a fan of um national service at all 
to scare me to death. You know, I was, I've got mates now, I've got mates that I joined up with, we're still friends and um, it's like it's like this unwritten rule, isn't it? You know, we all know. And there is there is this 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 code if you like. It, and I think I've mentioned this before that it's all about family. As you get. It's all about family and I didn't realise until uh, a good few years back now actually how big that family and how strong that family tie is blood family I tell you it doesn't mean nothing compared to uh, the family that you got that you, that you served with and that may sound a bit harsh that may sound a bit harsh But personally, from personal experience, it's true. I think I've told you the story about when I joined up. And this is for the new people that maybe some of the new people that that uh, that didn't know my. Uh, I think the battery's going to die any minute, so I might <laughs> I might have to leave you in suspense for the next bit. So I think it's going to die any second. Yeah. It's lasted a fair while though. So if I suddenly disappear mid-sentence, you know why. Go on in. Morgan McLaren. Clarenon, part of the Kalina group, which now owns Eddie Stobarts and all the rest of the shite. I saw an Eddie Stobart wagon today. There's not many of them left. There's a few floating around still. You can come over if you wanted to, or are you just gonna stay out there like a knobber? No, we're gonna stay out there like a knobber. Good to see the standard of he must have been an ex Eddie Stobart driver. I knock him, but fucking hell, they deserve to be knocked sometimes. Come on, dickhead, move over. He's eased off, I'm catching him back up again. Gonna have to hit the anchors. Here we go. We're down to the last bar. And the old battery is gonna uh, be exhausting itself in a moment.
We're still going. any second. It's a nice long video for you. I'll probably do it in two bits though. Right. Gallon are going back up again, that's good. Averaging today 9.6 miles to the gallon, not bad considering I had a heavy old load going up. thing it doesn't tell me these days is it used to tell me my overall fuel consumption but it only tells me my day my daily uh, fuel consumption I think oh hang on no maybe not at uh, 10.1 overall nine and a half thousand miles I'm averaging 10.1 mile of the gallon that's not bad That's not bad. That's running empty and fully freighted. That's everything all in, average, you know, 10.1. I said to, uh, I said to my governor, I said, and, and, what, what's the fuel consumption, what are you expecting to get out of these? And he said, well, if I get eight, eight mile of the gallon, we'll be happy. So you should be fucking happy with me. I should get a raise. 10 mile of the governor. 10 mile to the gallon, governor. I am gentle with her, you know. I don't, um, I don't sit her at 56. Oh, I think it's going to die any second. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget, give your loved ones a hug. Extra special big hugs. Tell them you love them. I'll bid you all farewell. The battery is about to be exhausted. I know how it feels. What do you go on for another five minutes, just like myself? I reckon I've got about another hour before I pull over. Well, I've done eight hours of driving. 12 hour day, just over 12, 12 and a half hours a day, 12 and a half hour day, under 13, so that'll do me, earn me money.
almost like go on battery die <laughs> it's, it's putting up a valiant fight I must admit